Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Again, apologies about last week, I suffered, <laughs> as it were, uh, and yeah, unfortunately, you know, a bit ill and stuff like that, and I uh, couldn't get any videos out. Uh, hopefully I don't sound too nasally, because I'm not quite 100% yet, uh, but, you know, is what it is, need to get some videos out. So... Uh, this came out a few days ago and I was really interested and I thought I'd go through it with you. Uh, it's about some new gameplay stuff coming and it's specifically about the unions and stuff like that. So I thought we'd uh, go through it. It's on the website at the current moment uh, and chat about it because it's really, really, really interesting. So, org operations. An org operation is born against the background that various orgs are desperate for a function for collective action so as to satisfy the increasing needs of system explorations as Dawn Accord revives. Clans, guilds and unions will unlock this function with a limited number when reaching a certain level and a scope of each org uh, operation will be large, uh, larger than a regular one for the individual explorer. Org operations can only be created by the leader, associate leader, who will designate a member as the commander of the operation. Once the operation is created, all members can use the operation by commanding use, taking up one seat of the operation quota set for each organization. After commanding use, the member is able to run specific commands within the org operation. Um, Interesting. It looks like there's different shapes and stuff you can make here as well. You can have a nice big circle. You can have a whatever that is. Um, and I'm not sure what this means about adjusting angles. I'm guessing that's more related to this one, which is kind of pointy at one end, so you can sort of angle it in specific ways. Uh, but yeah, looks interesting. Designate and command fleets. Members of the organization can entrust their fleets to the appointed commander of the org operation with the command delegate, which takes one seat of the delegation quota set for each org operation. Max action points is set for each org operation. Running the delegate command can add to the action points and yield the commander, uh, commander of the fleet to the appointed commander uh, for the org operation temporarily. The appointed commander can command delegate fleets to execute, transfer, guard, and attack within the scope of the org operation at the cost of a cert, uh, certain action points. So this is really cool. Uh, actually works out really well for me as well, specifically because uh, the majority of the operations that happen within uh, my union are within late at night, you know, I'm normally well asleep by this point because the US time based mostly and I'm UK time based. So it does make it a bit difficult for me to uh, attend some operations. This, however, let me give my fleet to the commander and he can go and do what he wants and needs with it. So it's kind of like being there without having to be there by giving your uh, command of your fleet to the uh, commander for the duration of the operation. So it's really... Um, Really, really useful, really, really cool. Uh, obviously, it puts a lot of emphasis on having make well, making sure that you've got good commanders uh, in your union so they can operate potentially multiple fleets at the same time. So there's going to be a bit of micro uh, happening there. So they need to be pretty good at that uh, if you are going to use this delegate feature. Features and talents. So I don't understand why they kind of started with all the operation stuff because then they explain the clan guild stuff a bit later on. So we'll go through that now. In my opinion, it should be the other way around. But uh, this is sort of like um, how we got the leveling system at the current moment, uh, which isn't particularly useful or great. Uh, this is kind of how it works now is they've added these sort of categories in of how big your union is. So... Clan and Guild will be included in the Langrange network as new organisations, while new adjustments are also brought uh, about for the Union. Clan, closely tied, equipped with Clan's warehouse, max seats 10 to 30 with talents. Guild, military focused, equipped with Guild's dockyard, max seats 20 initially, with 50 with talents and the Union massively connected with stronger commanding capabilities, max seats 30 initial 
uh, and 100 with talent. Now, I'm not certain if these are separated. Like, you, if you're a clan, you only get to 30. That's it. It's done. That's your union built. A guild can only go up to 50 and unions up to 100. I, I'm not 100% certain how that's all going to work. Um, or if it is a union gets all the clan guild buffs and the guild gets all the clan buffs and as you like increase you know your max seats you change into a guild and then you change into a union and you uh, keep hold of these warehouses and dockyards uh, it's kind of hoping how it's going to work but again I can't be certain on that one member of the clan can be appointed as logistics officer this is if you uh, and the clan with the clan warehouse 10 to 30 people uh, as logistics office for the org, the logistics officer is able to build clan's warehouse at the docking point within operation area at the space station. Uh, clan's warehouses can store metal crystal deuterium uh, transported by members of the clan. The logistics officer can distribute the resources in the warehouse to different members fleets liaised with the space station, enabling the exchanges among members of the clan. Nice way to actually include guys that are a lot more PvE focused because they could technically fund your war efforts with this clan warehouse by, you know, they're going away doing their Farmville thing, mining away and all that good stuff, bringing any resources they are, you know, in excess of over to this warehouse, dumping it in there. And then maybe your PvPers, which have lost ships and fleets and need to rebuild, can come over to this warehouse, collect a bunch of resources, take them back and get their production back up and running. Actually really, really cool. Uh, love this feature. This is amazing, uh, in my opinion. Again, I'm really hoping that it is going to be tied into, like how I said, once you become a clan, you get too big, you become the guild and then become the union and you have access to all of these uh, things. Because that would be um, awesome. And uh, there we go, we have a picture here. Uh, only for display, it doesn't represent the final quality. So far, so much, well, so far, pretty much any picture that's been in-game has been pretty much the same. And, I mean, textually, they, they're normally a bit better, uh, but generally, it's kind of what you're gonna be looking at when you're looking at the clan warehouse. The guild's dockyard. So one member of the guild can be appointed as the port officer for the org. The port officer is able to build guild's dockyards at the dock docking point within the operation area at the space station. Guild's dockyards can receive fleets sent and transferred by the members of the guild. Port officers can distribute the ships in the guild's dockyard to different members' fleets liaised with the space station, enabling the exchange among the members of the guild size and construction of the guild stockyard uh, will be limited which can be improved by unlocking talents for structure again really cool idea there's a lot of time you've got these big whales and they can't physically use all of their ships anyway so what this will be uh, allow them to do is maybe some of those uh, relic variants that they don't use but they have the tech points on is tech point them out ship them over to this dockyard and then you can give them to some newer players that maybe don't have anything unlocked and just give them the firepower necessary to, you know, potentially compete on a server when you're in the, uh, the sort of higher tier service. So again, this is a really nice feature. Um, again, how usable any of these really are, I can't really, you know, comment until they're in game and we start using them. A bit like the FSV at the moment, it's kind of in a weird spot where it's like, it's sort of usable, but there's a weird bug and stuff like that. Uh, so again, these features, they sound great on paper uh, until we get hold of them and we start playing with them will be uh, when we sort of find out a bit more info on all this. We then have the Union's commanding capability. Unions can hold larger max number of operations and members by unlocking talents than clans and guilds. This is kind of where I'm slightly worried, although it, it does say just here, like, next step. I mean, I'm not sure. It's <laughs> great organization, Union. Ah, uh, okay, so yeah, maybe, maybe clans are a separate thing to guilds and stuff like that so maybe clans are more pve focused guilds pvp focused unions whatever they currently are uh whatever you want them to be i guess 
Clan, guild, and union can acquire a certain talent points when leveling up. Leaders of the organization can unlock org talents with the talent points to increase max number of members, improve the space station's defense, promote mining efficiency, enhance functions including clan's warehouse, guild stockyard, and org operation. Uh, unlocked org talents can be reset under certain, circ uh, certain conditions. So again, these are looks, sounds like they're all separate again, which is a bit unfortunate. Do you know what would be nice here? As if there was a fourth one and it was like um, an alliance. And in the alliance, you can have 10 clans, three guilds, and a union or something all within one thing. That, that'd be a nice way of doing it, wouldn't it? And then you'd have like actual alliances in the game. And then you would have an alliance of an alliance. Alliance-ception? Um, either way, organizations of various types can deploy talents at different fields according to build diverse and unique structures. After the updates, unions won't increase the max seats of the union with a level up. Uh, for that, unlocking org talents will be the only way to add max seats for all organizations. At the same time, existing unions will gain corresponding talent points according to their level and unlock all unlockable uh, talents for members increased uh, by default. Accordingly, cooperation among different orgs and assessment rules of accords and various systems will be adjusted too. Coming soon in the next part, introduction of community and adjustments of assessment rules. This sounds like they're actually doing something about very, very large um, alliances cropping up and just taking over servers. Uh, that would be interesting. I'm curious to see what they do about that. I've complained to them on multiple times now that uh, having these huge unions literally just clog up an entire server does not make for good, good gameplay. And if anything, if a new union ends up in one of those servers against a union, that an alliance that's, you know, five, six unions strong, but they can't win and they can't do anything and then they just spend the entire game either getting absolutely blasted into the floor or they quit and you don't want players quitting so all very good sounding stuff again it does sound like the clans guilds and unions are all separate so depending on what these talent trees are like uh, considering that they said that the uh, the guild one is a bit more player versus player focused, does make me consider things that uh, maybe in the talent tree, maybe there's things like increased fire damage, uh, like 10% increased damage for your ships, all ships within the guild or stuff like that. And if that's the case, I think you're going to start seeing unions maybe... Uh, well, disappear a little bit and maybe more guilds and clans appearing and allying, uh, allying together. Um, so you can get these, you know, specific books for what your guys are trying to do. Uh, again, we don't know really what's going on. Uh, they haven't given a date yet either for when this is landing, I don't believe. Uh, no, that's the date that this released. Uh, but yeah. So really big update, something definitely to look forward to and definitely I'll be keeping an eye out and hopefully uh, when, well, I'm mostly recovered now, uh, whenever the introduction of community and adjustments of assessment rules drops, I will cover that as well so you get a uh, bit more up-to-date information rather than several days later, although I'm sure most of you probably read this by now. So with that... Have a good one, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.